are back with another video here on the Seat Things Above podcast. Hope y'all are doing well. Hope y'all are doing splendid. So I'm just going to hop on and talk about this video real quick. This is something I caught on um, the ever faithful woke preacher clips, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, it was. And <laughs> this was, uh, I found this to be interesting, obviously, as a guy who is, um, you know, I have hip hop roots. I would say I'm a hip hop kid, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who loves the genre and all that kind of stuff and even, you know, loves CHH. Uh, I don't know if it's loves or loved at the moment, but uh, got a love for it anyway. And uh, so anyway, let's check out this video real quick because uh, Houston, we have a problem here. So let's go ahead and check this out. This is from uh moody bible institute i guess they had an event going on and this is looks like a q a panel and we have one gentleman here who answers this question that is posed so let's go ahead and check this out the overall message of today's um of today's chapel is that hip-hop is not merely entertainment but it's deeply theological i'll say that again hip-hop is not merely entertainment but it is deeply Theological has severe theological empathy. Yeah, okay, you can shout if you want. That's that's cool. All right, so all right, so right off the bat, man, I have questions about that. I had I'm suspicious about that because now, do you mean that hip hop, as in CHH, is deeply theological, or do you mean hip hop that is written from a uh, Christian worldview is theological, like? What are we saying here? This is kind of where it gets bad. It starts to get bad right here. You know what I mean? What it do? <laughs> I mean, the premise itself is kind of it, 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 it's messed up, but then it gets bad as my man starts to comment on this thing. Uh, to say that just a form of music in and of itself is theological, any form of music, whether that's hip hop, jazz, rock and roll, R&B, whatever you want to say, man, you know, reggae, to say that just in and of itself is deeply theological. Um, I have questions about that, man. I don't think every single person who uh, makes a, f a certain form of music or participates in a certain form of music is thinking about God when they are writing their music. So just off of that alone, I just don't think you can make that statement that hip hop inherently in and of itself is deeply theological. But this gentleman that we're about to, you know, uh, hear respond to the question is going to actually make that case. Now, obviously, we're watching what we're watching, right? So we have access to this clip right here. I don't know the context of everything that was said that evening. I don't know what the whole event was about. We don't have all that information. But just based off of what we're seeing here, it seems that he's responding to this question. And he is actually making the case that, yes just hip hop as a as an art form as a type of music is theological so let's continue with this video so can 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 y'all help me unpack that statement how does hip hop culture correlate with theology and why should theologians people of the Moody Bible Institute who are studying to be pastors and leaders of the church why should they consider the influence of hip hop yeah um so the, the, the key to this one is, is understanding the theological implications of where God resides when we look at Scripture. God always resides on the bottom of empire. From the beginning of the text, when we read the Bible, we see Israel in, on the bottom of the Egyptian empire. And there God inhabits, works with, frees, liberates those people. And all throughout the text, you see God consistently show up, whether it's the bottom of the Babylonian empire, whether it's the, right, right, the, 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 the bottom of the Persian empire. And then when you get into the New Testament, you see. All right, man. So <laughs> right now we, we starting to get into some of the, uh, things that I just can't bang with over here. So listen, he said, God resides at the bottom of empire, right? The examples he gives is the Israelites in Egypt, okay? He gives that as an example that God was with. So basically the point he's making is that God is always with the, the marginalized people, right? The people who are 
the people who are going through a tough time, the people who uh, are probably facing some sort of oppression, like God is with them. And the fact that he uses the term God is always, right? God always resides at the bottom of empire. When that couldn't be further from the truth, if you look at scripture, God is not necessarily uh, residing on the side of marginalized people. He's residing on the side of people who are obeying his commandments. That's who he's, uh, that's whose side he's on. It's people who are following his will, people who are obeying his commandments, his covenant people, um, uh, the people who are uh, seeking to live godly lives. That's who he is residing with, right? So he's residing with his people, and it doesn't matter if they're rich, poor, um, if they're Gentiles, if they're Jews, he's residing with his people, right? Now, he talked about the Babylonian Empire. All right, now let's check this out. This is Jeremiah. All right, this is Jeremiah 27. And in particular, we want to look at verse 6. But I'm going to go ahead and just read it from the top of this chapter, all right? So it says, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Thus says the Lord to me, make yourself straps and yoke bars and put them on your neck. Send word to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the sons of Ammon, the king of Tyre, and the king of Sidon by the hand of the envoys who have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah. Give them this charge for their masters. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. This is what you shall say to your masters. Now check this out. It is I who by my great power and my outstretched arm have made the earth with the men and animals that are on the earth. And I give to whomever it seems right to me. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And I have given him all the beasts of the field to serve him. All the nations shall serve him and his son and his grandson until the time of his own land comes. Then many nations and great kings shall make him their slave. So, the point of all this being that God was perfectly in control. He was fully in control of what was happening on both sides of this war, right? He's in control of who's in power, and he's also in control of who's not in power, right? By, by virtue of him being in control of the first one and by virtue of him just being sovereign. So to say that God resides at the bottom of empires, that statement makes it look, look like God is, like stuff is happening and God is not in control of all of it. He's in control of all of it. So he's not residing, uh, he's not residing solely on the side of people who are the, the ones who are struggling. And as we see in the history of Israel, whenever a lot of times when they suffered is because of their own sin. So there is a, um, this is the way God is punishing Israel for their actions. So to suggest that God is residing at the bottom of empires is just not accurate. Now, does God care about everybody? Does he care about the widow? Does he care about the, 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 um, the orphan? Does he care about the sojourner? Does he care about just the, the weak people in society, he does. Yes, of course God does. But this is because of this theological framework, this sort of this black liberation theology, this theology that must show God to be one who is working for always and pushing for the good of the oppressed people in society and acting again as though he's not in control of all of it. So that's where we're getting error like this coming into play. 
But let's go ahead with the rest of the video. Let's see the rest of the points that this gentleman is making real quick. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. On the bottom of the empire in Jerusalem and God showing up for the people who are on the bottom. Why does that coincide with hip-hop? Because hip-hop is created out of a culture uh, or created as a culture from people who are on the bottom of the American empire. People who have been left out, who have been uh, left to die. For I mean, when you read the history of, of hip-hop and we don't have time to go into all of it, there is a theological implication that comes from people being marginalized, oppressed, that makes them rely on God. The same thing we see with the civil rights movement and all the way before that, anytime people are marginalized and oppressed, there is a reliance on God that brings new theological perspectives. He talks about Jesus arriving on the scene and being on the side of the marginalized people. He talks about hip hop being something that was, and I, I really would love to understand what he's trying to say when he said people who were like, talking about people being, uh, you know, like their lives were in danger and all this stuff. Like if he's talking about historically, maybe the roots of hip hop, maybe he's talking about, you know, the early inception of it, the Bronx and all these kind of things. Maybe, you know, I, I just, I don't really know what he's talking about. Like people, I'd like to hear what he meant by that. Because if we're talking about hip hop today, most of the people doing it today, that's not their experience, man. It's, it's just people who love the music, people who, uh, for the most part, man, like the old school, you know what I'm saying, is not even recognized by a lot of these, the the, the current hip-hop artists. So to say that, uh, you know, hip-hop, you know, just, just identifies with marginalized people and it is, and therefore God is in there somehow. This is some weird stuff, man. This is not... Uh, this is not solid theology, man. This is not solid theology. And, and these guys, um, you know, I'm sure they're very intelligent, very well-learned uh, individuals, man. But this is how the error creeps in. When we start to let our own theological biases make us have blinders on, then we start to create categories and we start to create narratives that aren't even true. And that's what's happening in this case right here. So. Like, let's remember, when, when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter and the gang want to start fighting. I mean, Peter wanted to start fighting. I mean, chop one dude's ear off. But he said, yo, put your sword away. Don't you think? I mean, it, I'm paraphrasing, of course. He said, you know, I could call a legion of angels here. You know what I mean? I could, I could call a whole gang of angels right now. We could shut this thing down right now. Don't you think I could do that? Don't you know I could do that? But God did not do that. In the midst of all that, his purpose to actually go to the cross to suffer the penalty for sin for those who would believe in him and to die in their place, it was necessary for the suffering to come. It was necessary for suffering to come because of that. And so, again, God is using the evil in the world. He's using the things that we would see, we would see as horrible things he is using those things to fulfill his purposes so my encouragement man is just to say watch out for stuff like this keep it bible keep it 100 bible man dive into your word let's analyze what the scripture says man this is not compatible with the scriptures this kind of thinking all right so don't want to hold y'all too long that's my quick response to this video right here don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be back with some more videos real soon, all right? Take it easy. God bless y'all, and remember to seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, all right? Peace.